But the tragedy is that if certain policies are pursued, they can become, and, or seem to become, an invitation to terrorism. So these are our guiding in the Rhodesian problem. We have said frankly from the beginning that we are against the use of force. Secondly, in dealing with all these problems of Southern Africa, we have always made it clear that we cannot and will not now contemplate an economic war with South Africa. There may be honest disagreement about our reasons for holding these positions, but I assure you that as seen by us, they are justified and inescapable. It's essential to recognize that these limitations do exist. To call for action in solving the problems of Southern Africa without at the same time recognizing the limitations on the scope of that action is to invite at best frustration and at worst a betrayal of the trust placed in us. It's a matter of great regret to us. So of all these problems I'm now discussing, the top priority for Britain must be Rhodesia. Here we shall continue faithfully to pursue the action we have advocated, carry out the measures we have put into effect. Which I read yesterday, in the New York Times, according to which Israeli settlements are to be established in the occupied territories. I fear, I feel that the implications of this are clear and disturbing. So it may well be that a wider United Nations presence will have a part to play in all this. Under the devoted leadership of General Oddball, UNSO has done so much to restore calm where it is allowed to operate. Perhaps this should be built upon. We could hope that the need for any such force would be short. We hope a stable peace and good neighborliness will grow in the Middle East. We all know that the Secretary General is right when he says that the essential precondition in the Middle East is an end to incitement and hatred, the achievement of calm and recourse to reason. We think that a United Nations presence could be crucial to the first steps on this path. My own view is that a settlement in the Middle East can only come through the United Nations organization, and we, the members, must without delay seek to agree the framework within which the organization is to operate. And I turn now to the intractable problems of Southern Africa. We ourselves in Britain have carried out our obligations under the Security Council resolutions 100%. Indeed, we have gone much further than the letter of those resolutions would, would require. It's only right that Britain, with our special res responsibilities for Rhodesia, should set an example. But we are entitled to ask that others should also join wholeheartedly in the mutual effort to which the overwhelming majority of us have set our hand. And now, may The past year has been filled with killing and destruction and marked by a range of abortive efforts to bring about peace. It is tragic that the North Vietnamese authorities have declined to grasp the many opportunities to negotiate which have been offered and still remain open to them. There has been no reduction in the fighting. There has been no progress towards a solution. There has been progress of another sort. The people of South Vietnam have shown their determination to follow constitutional processes in the midst of war. They want a regime of their own choice. The need for a solution is more ur urgent, I believe, than before. Vietnam itself cannot afford to let the war continue. And no more can any of us, for the conflict distorts the relations between us and hinders the growth of peaceful cooperation. It is the duty, I submit, of all who have influence to use it to find a way of stopping the fighting and to do this soberly and in full recognition of their international responsibilities. The use of violent and excessive language towards any of the parties in this conflict contributes nothing to the search for peace. In this situation, my government hope that all concerned with the conflict will acknowledge the need for compromise. Not compromise on principles, but compromise in moving to negotiation. We will support any initiative which offers a chance of progress. 
We have warmly supported the persistent efforts of the Secretary General and the plan he put forward last March. We are ready to meet with the governments of the Soviet Union, India, Canada and Poland as proposed by the President of the World Federation of United Nations Associations so very recently. In the same spirit, we welcome the desire of the President-elect of South Vietnam to try once again to bridge the gap between Saigon and Hanoi. Sir, much has been said about the bombing of What we must work for in this area is a durable peace, the renunciation of all aggressive designs, and an end to policies which are inconsistent with peace. As I suggested in June, as the Secretary General has himself recommended, there should, we believe, be a special representative of the Secretary General in the area charged with making direct contact with the parties to the dispute. His would be no easy task, but that makes his appointment, we believe, the more necessary and the more urgent. Without delay, we must tackle the question of ensuring the free use of international waterways. The denial of this right was one of the root causes of this summer's trouble. As things stand, no country enjoys the use of the Suez Canal. Unless this route is quickly available again, there must inevitably be damaging changes in the pattern of world trade. The economies of the world would permanently reduce their dependence on routes of communication which can be blocked or interrupted for a long time. And so an even more perhaps urgent problem, if possible, that of the people, the individual people, who have suffered personal loss, disruption of their lives. The Assembly rightly expressed urgent concern for the refugees during its emergency session. Last month, a limited step was taken towards the alleviation of the problem when some former residents of the West Bank were allowed to return there. It's a matter of great regret to my government and to myself that there hasn't been more progress over the return of innocent people to their homes. And I heartily endorse Mr. Gussing's plea that the humanitarian aspects of the refugee situation be divorced from the political and military aspects. So looking to the future, imagination, cooperation, resources. Man muss ihn nicht unter den Anliegen des 